All right, yesterday we started our introduction to kinematics, and uh, I pointed out yesterday that much of this is going to be reviewed from grade 9 and grade 10. You'll see it sort of expand beyond what you know sort of quietly over the next few days. I mentioned Galileo and Newton. I defined for you mechanics, kinematics, and dynamics, and I also mentioned what translational motion is. If you don't have this handout, I think you can have it in O'Reilly, right? You know that one? Yeah. Okay, we briefly talked about speed and velocity, and I reminded you of the formula V bar equals D over T. The bar over top means average, average, average velocity. Because really, when you drive, like let's say you drive to Winnipeg, okay? The speed limit says 100. Let's, for the sake of argument, just say that nobody goes over 100. Would your average velocity then be 100? No. No, because you got to slow down, right? To go through each wire, you got to make a left turn. You got to slow down to go to Glasgow. You might speed up to 110 to pass someone, right? So it's your average velocity. It's not your instantaneous, and that is an important distinction in the future. Um, I think we had to do this question manually yesterday, so you might remember the answer. But if not, let's go ahead and just do that right now. You might have it written down already. So go ahead and answer that question. How far can a cyclist travel in four hours if his average speed is 11.5? Okay, yeah, we all got it right. How do we do it? Four times 11.5. Awesome. All right, man. I'm going to kind of wait. Okay, let's talk about reference frames and coordinate systems. Okay, so flip the page over. Let's talk about reference frames. So when riding in a train, anybody ever ridden on a train before? Yeah? I went to Toronto once on the train, it was a great trip. Yeah. Okay, so you may have, Peyton, on your way to church, or you may have observed a bird flying by overhead, and you may have remarked that it looks as if it's moving at a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. Anyone ever done that before? No. Not so many hands, oddly enough. But do you mean that this bird is traveling at 20 kilometers an hour with respect to the train or with respect to the ground? Train. What the heck do I mean by that? Every measurement must be made with respect to a frame of reference. With respect to. For example, while on a train traveling at 9 meters per second, you might notice a person walk past you toward the front of the train, and because they're wearing a giant speedometer on them, you would notice that they're traveling at 2 meters per second. Now, are they traveling at 2 meters per second with respect to the train or to the ground? Train. To the train, it's 2. With respect to the ground, that move person is moving at a speed of... Don't say it! Hey, what are we talking about? How fast is that person moving with respect to the ground? What do I mean then when I say respect to the ground, that they're traveling? Let's see if this is going to work today. Yay, restart. With respect to the ground, they're moving at 11 meters per second. What does that mean? It means that if Jake was standing on the ground, he had like a radar gun pointed at the person, they would register 11. How come? Because train plus them, right? 9 plus, plus 2. So, of course, this is the person's speed with respect to the train as a frame of reference. How many people? I always wondered this, like, how come if you're on like a train or a boat that's going forward, if you jump on it, you go flying backwards? You're moving You're moving Excellent question. Let me pause here for a second. But I think you get the idea of frame of reference now. Okay, so, of course, this is the person's speed with respect to the train as a frame of reference. It's always important to specify the frame of reference when stating a speed. In everyday life, we usually mean with respect to the earth. When you see that 100 kilometers an hour speed limit, in little fine print underneath, if you get out and look on the highway, it says with respect to the earth. Really? Someone always falls for that. But technically, that's true, right? Who's moving right now? Anyone? The Earth. We all are. We're rotating, right? As the Earth rotates 24 hours to the ground, we're also traveling around the sun. The sun comes. That is trying to determine how fast we're going on our phone using your calculator right now. Yeah. The Milky Way is spinning around as well. We're all moving at very, very high speeds. It doesn't feel like it because we're kind of used to it. And our frame of reference is we're stationary. 
Okay? So the frame of reference should be specified whenever there might be confusion. How many people think you might get away with a speeding ticket if you say, but officer, the sign doesn't say with respect to the ground? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Okay. The values of other physical quantities can also depend on frame of reference. For example, there's no point in telling you that riding Mountain National Park is 100 kilometers away unless I specify 100 kilometers from where. Distances are always measured in some frame of reference. Furthermore, when specifying the motion of an object, it's important to specify not only the speed, but the direction of motion. For example, if a friend leaves Winnipeg on a jet plane that travels at a speed of 1,000 kilometers an hour, you might like to know what direction they're going. Toronto, Vancouver, or heaven help them, Ottawa. Often we can specify a direction by using the cardinal points. Those are north, east, south, and west, by up and down. This is not always convenient, so in physics we often draw a set of coordinate axes as shown to represent a frame of reference. So the coordinate frame of reference, the Cartesian uh, plane, anybody know what the Cartesian plane, who it's named after? Cartesian. Oh, Cartesian people. Cartesian. No, Rene Descartes. Rene Descartes was a French mathematician, came up with the Cartesian plane. Where's the origin? Zero. The zero, right? That's the frame of reference there. Really discussing the lifetime of Rene Descartes. Objects positioned to the right of the origin in accordance on the x axis are usually said to have an x coordinate with a positive value. Points to the left of zero usually have a negative one. Position along the y axis is usually considered positive when above and negative when below. You guys know all this, right? Blah, 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 blah. In three dimensions, we have what we call a z axis. So x is left, right, y is up, down, z is. In and up. So if you're a 3D printer, you need to know your x, your y, and your z axis. Although most measurements are made in reference frames fixed on the Earth, it's important to recognize that reference frames other than the Earth are perfectly legitimate. For example, scientific measurements are sometimes made on moving ships and spacecraft and on the moon. And I have a quick bit of video to show you here about frame of references. What they're talking about there is, and don't worry about the Coriolis effect and all that centrifugal force and all that mumbo jumbo, I'll get to that eventually in grade 12. You, you just need to know that a frame of reference means, depending on where you're making your measurement, things might change. The 9 or the 11 or the 2 meters per second. That's what I'm getting at there. Okay. I hope you remember how to do this. Quick check here. See if you remember how to do this. Remember that uh, things that might be in kilometers an hour, you might have to convert to meters per second. So hopefully you remember the rule for converting kilometers per hour to meters per second. And you should know it in the time it takes for me to finish this sentence. You shouldn't be having to look it up. If you have to, go ahead. But you should know it. Kilometers per hour to meters per second. Kilometers per hour to meters per second. Hurry, hurry. Five, four, three, two, one. Quick answer is? Ooh. Correct answer is B. Kilometers per hour to meters per second. How do you remember it? Well, first of all, it's speed, so it's not the thousand one. Speeds, and when you're going from big to small, you got to make it smaller, right? So you got to divide. Divide by 3.6. Think about 100 kilometers per hour. If you were to multiply by 3.6, you'd get 3,600 meters per second. How far is 3,600 meters? Yeah, 3.6 kilometers, or well over the distance of the track in one second. That's not. That's pretty fast. That's faster than 100 kilometers an hour. Can you do this one? The rule for converting meters per second to kilometers per hour. I'm really hoping you all get this one right. You should. Correct okay. answer? Yay! Everybody got it. Correct answer is A. Make sure you know those things. Oh. <laughs> hey, that was kind of an example of inertia there, wasn't it? It had physics. I don't know. Let me see if I can do that again. I went like this, and I tried to like circle it, but I went. 
you see it bounce off the I did see that, yeah. There must be like some coefficient of friction or something that holds the bee from sliding. What? Do you think it'll work for the sea? That is cool. I wonder if it actually, like all, all you know, fun and games aside, I wonder if there is an actual way to figure out. Push it really hard and see many times Yeah, that's as hard as I can push it. Like when you pull and you put it It's too hard. And it went on an angle too, like if I go like this. I don't know, yeah. That's cool. Okay, there's five questions at the back. You know what? They're so simple, I'm not even going to waste class time on them. You just need, it doesn't say it on yours, you just need to be able to do them. You better know how to define mechanics, kinematics, dynamics, and translational motion. You better be able to write the farm for average speed. You better be able to tell me what a frame of reference is and give me an example. And you better be able to do those conversions. I don't think we need to waste any time doing them. I have handed you a sheet which matches these notes. You should follow along, jot down some of the missing parts. Okay? It's kind of like notes, but I prefer some of the tedious part for you. The clicker quiz is now over. I regret to tell you. Uh, I will do my best to include more clicker quizzes in the future. Okay, so linear kinematics, basically the same kind of stuff, we're going to take a little bit of a stretch further. So kinematics is, and I think people can drop this in there, the description of motion by studying the relationships among the variables of position, velocity, and time. You are going to go to sleep dreaming of position, velocity, and time. Yeah. Well, it might help you go to sleep, I don't know. The description of motion by studying the relationships among the variables of position, velocity, and time. So, if we're studying position, velocity, and time, what can you tell me about the red car, green car, and blue car? Well, which car is traveling at a constant velocity? Can you tell? Red car. Red one? Green one. Could there be more than one? We're talking about which car is traveling at a constant velocity. What do I mean by constant velocity? Same oh, speed, right? The red, right? The red one? Yeah, I, that red one looks like it's pretty constant velocity. I think. It, yeah. Which one has, which one has the greater average velocity? How do you know? How, how do you know the blue one has the greater average velocity? It won the race. The race is the same distance, and it gets there first, which means it has a smaller amount of time, greater speed, right? Absolutely. Which car experiences the greatest acceleration, can you tell? Like, which one speeds up the most? Really? Okay. It could be green, it could be blue. It's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? We're going to have to investigate, we're going to have to do some numbers, we're going to have to do some calculations, some graphs. He can't just look at pictures. Yeah. All right. So the word motion implies movement from one place to another. So that means that position, which is where the object is located, is the most fundamental consideration in studying motion. Put into regular person speak, it means you have to understand position before you can study motion. Riley, where are you? Can you be more specific? Can you be more specific? Like you keep saying that over and over, didn't I? Really, right? Where you are, you can say I'm here. The third seat from the left and the second row from the back. I'm in Route 236. I'm in 330 Mountain Road, Dauphin, Mexico, Canada. Okay, your position is pretty important. Milky Way. Yeah. In order to specify an object's position on a straight line, three things are required. Anderson, tell me what you think the first thing might be. Origin or frame of reference. Excellent. How did you know? Yeah. I know you did. <laughs> Your origin or frame of reference. You have to have an origin or frame of reference when you describe position. I mentioned, Ryan said he's in class. Did he have a frame of reference? Oh, it's not good. 
When I said he's the third seed over from the left, that's kind of a frame of reference. The left end of the desk is, is the frame of reference, right? Okay, so usually we just choose any old point, call it zero, say, hey, man, that's the origin. That's the starting point, right? What does the word arbitrary mean? Just means there's no rule. It's just that's the starting point there, right? Just is. So we're gonna we're gonna do, we're all gonna agree this is the starting line, kind of thing. Okay. So some arbitrary starting point. By the way, you don't have to write everything down. You can put sort of put it in your own words, right? Okay. And so let's see if someone else can come up with the second one. Jordan. Excellent. Distance. How far away the object is from the origin. When I mentioned Riley's position, I said it was three seats over, or the third seat. That's some way of describing distance. How far away? Okay? On a Cartesian plane like this, you might have to use the distance formula. You guys remember the distance formula? Anybody remember that from math class? Maybe you guys haven't got there yet. Big square root. Like x2 minus x1 squared you know, plus y2 minus y1 squared. It's really just a fancy way of talking about measurement. That's all it really is, right? Can you just do x2 minus x1? Can you just put a square root over You could, but what if it's like out on the earth or some other, right? Or who knows? It doesn't matter. Distance. That's the second thing for position. Okay. Direction is the third one. I won't hold you hostage to uh, drama there for too long. On a straight line, positive and negative numbers used to indicate direction. In grade 9 and 10, we may deal mainly with left to right. Grade 11 is very similar, just left to right. Grade 12, we start dealing with what we call projectile motion. When I walk across. Is that what we get to yeah, and then when I walk across the floor, that's a projectile, and we would use a rocket. What's that your positive? Okay. Of course, everybody knows positive to the right, negative to the left. Please don't write that entire thing down. How can you summarize that? How can you summarize this whole... So you don't have to spend forever writing it down. Pretty much does it, right? If you want, you can put arrows, maybe. That's the kind of skill you got to have. Because those professors, Professor Quackenbush, is not going to wait forever for you to write every word down. <laughs> the combination of these three things <laughs> results in the object position. That is, how far away it is from a set point and what direction. Now, on a number line, we don't come out and just say, here's the starting point, here's the origin. We just assume. Everybody agrees that zero is going to be the starting point. So on a number line like this, we would say that x1 is at plus 2. Of course, x2 is at right here at minus 5. And x3 is over here at plus 6, right? Nothing too earth-shattering there. Probably not even worth writing it down. If you have to write that down, how do people think I'm the crush on the test? I'm going to ask way back on October the... Is it the second today? Yeah. October the second at two oh seven, Mr. Bennett put this diagram up on the board. What position was X three at? I'm not gonna ask that question. I'm not gonna ask it. I don't expect you to know it. Yeah, put it on your cheat sheet. Good idea. Showing straight line motion. Using a position line, consider the following trip which is described in terms of a position line. Watch the ball. It goes like this. Oh, and that pauses. Oh, and then it comes back. So what did it do? Well, it went to plus 3, and then it came back to minus 1, but there's a problem. If I just showed you that picture at the start, you what, what happened there at position plus 3? It paused. Can you tell that now that it paused? All you know is it went to 3 and it came back. You don't know how long it was there. It could have been there for a day. The description does not tell us such things as how far it traveled. Well, it does say that. Why does it? 
It doesn't say how far it traveled. It doesn't say whether or not it ever stopped. It doesn't say for how long. Anything to do with time is not, not there, right? There is no time component to it. There's no time component. So number lines are not real good for describing motion. What we need is something that you guys, I know if you've seen a position time graph. Okay? Position time graph, sometimes abbreviated a PT graph, position time. I tend to call them DT graphs, displacement time. Displacement time, position time, same thing. Okay? So here's a position time graph for the same object's motion. Exactly the same. Well, maybe not. I guess I have to fix my animation. You can see here that it starts it now here. What's on the x-axis here? The time. What's on the y-axis? Position. Now, here's a delicate little problem. Because sometimes they're called position is sometimes referred to as the x. They don't mean, Hannah, the x-axis. They mean position x. Some books will even go so far as to call them xt graphs. But the position X is on the Y coordinate here. So watch out for that. It does trip people up occasionally. Sometimes you might see delta X for change in position. They don't mean the difference in time. They mean the difference in position. Okay, so I start at zero. One second later, I'm at plus three. Another second later, at time is equal to two, I'm down back down to minus one. And apparently here, this is where I pause. I have to do that on my, my animation there. I paused there, and then I went back to, to minus one. Okay? This tells us a whole lot more. It tells us how long. Does it tell us how fast? No. Do you remember how to get speed from a position time graph from grade 10? That's true. V does equal D over T, Joey. But I'm asking from a position time graph. How do you find the speed? And I know you've done it. Slope, sound familiar to anyone? Yeah. Slope, yeah. How many people were thinking slope but were too afraid to put their hand up or, or answer? Nobody? Come on, someone must have had slope in their mind, no? So you might as well, because how am I going to know? You might as well lie, right? Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Were you going to say that, Dana? Ah. Uh, say, yeah, yeah, I got it. What's happening in the interval zero second to one second? Do you have this question on your page? Yeah. What's happening from zero to one seconds? It's moving positively. It's moving to the right to a position of plus three. Right? It's moving to the right. What happens at a position of plus three? It slows down. Oh, interesting. Jordan's saying that it slows down. It goes backwards. Does it ever slow down? No. How can you tell? Use that word that I used about a minute ago. In the sentence, in your answer. <laughs> Don't just repeat the word. Oh. How do you know it's not slowing down, Joey? Can you tell? Don't know? Chris? The slope's the same, exactly. It's a straight line. That slope stays the same the entire time. The speed is the same the whole time. Right until the very last one one thousandth of a second, it's going the same speed, and then done right it just like bounces right it doesn't like like if you were gonna run at the wall <laughs> you run right okay and, and you get you realize I should probably slow down you would slow down if I throw the ball the ball doesn't realize that it just goes the same speed it bounces up <laughs> nothing special just turns around but it maintains the speed, right? Now, here's a good question. 
How fast is it going from 0 to 1 compared to from 1 to 2? Is one of those intervals, we'll call it, is the speed the same or is it different? Like, is it faster here between 0 and 1? Is it faster there between 1 and 2? Which one is faster? How can you tell? There's a couple There's a couple good answers to this question. Okay. Kaylin says that it's going, you're saying it's going 3 right there? Yeah. Okay, because it's going from 0 to 3 in 1 second, 3 meters per second, if we assume these are meters. Here it's going 2 in a second again, so it's only going 2. Now, I said speed. Technically, the velocity here would be minus 2, right? Because what's the scope here? Minus 2. So, yeah, it's definitely going considerably faster, actually, between 0 and 1. It's going faster. Probably lost some energy when it bounced or something. What happens from one to two seconds? I won't hold you in suspense too long. Uh, between one and two? Isn't it just moving back to the left? Right? Moving negatively or moving to the left? Is it not just moving left to a position of plus one? Right? It's actually going a little bit slower, too. We've already determined that, right? You can tell a lot from a position time track. I can even tell you whether it's accelerating or not. If you really knew calculus, you could figure out the jerk factor. This is probably what allowed Ryan's brother to fall asleep in physics class because I talked about the derivatives and calculus. Velocity is the derivative of displacement. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And the derivative of acceleration is the jerk. It's how fast your acceleration changes. More on that later. I won't get too much into it. Yeah. What happens from two seconds to four seconds here in this graph? A pause. It stopped. How can you tell it stopped? Uh, I heard someone say over here, nothing happens. Nothing good happens. Nothing good happens. No motion happens. That's for sure. Uh. Really? Stays at the same speed? Why do you say it stops, Steve? Because for the it's going two seconds, but it's still the same position. Yeah, yeah. The time it, the time keeps going on because time does that, but it stays at the same position, right? And you might know that the flat slope indicates it stopped too. So yeah, it stopped at a position plus one for how long? Two seconds. Right? What happens in the interval of four to five seconds? Starts moving, starts moving left again. Does it start off slow and sort of pick up speed? Just gives it right from the start? How can you tell? Yeah, exactly. What would it look like, Steve? Come on up. Indulge me here. Come on up to the smart board. It'll be all so much fun. Draw what it looks like. Don't try to be careful not to get red ink on you. No, here you go. Tell me, what would it look like? Draw for us here. What would it look like if it sped up as it was going backwards? What do you think? Help them out there, guys. Sorry, man. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. What? Come on up to it. You can do it. Help them out, you guys. Joey thinks, I think you're thinking, okay. Other way? Oh, yeah, like, flip it. You guys could have told me that. I tried. I tried to get him to help you. You just didn't want to listen to me. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you think? If it's, that's good, Joey. Yeah. Um, the question was, what would it look like if it was speeding up as it was going? And this is absolutely right. Curve like this. It would be flat to begin with. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger here. Right? It would start flat, and then it would increase its slope. Exactly right. Exactly. More on that in the future. What have I got down here? Oh, I got it. Object moves negatively to a position of minus one. Um, in our example, though, it's at the same 
Thanks be. Okay, so some conclusions here. Three conclusions that we're going to get out of all this. On a position time graph, what do the following represent? What does a positive slope line represent? Positive movement, positive acceleration, I hear. Who haven't I called on today? There we go. Positive constant velocity. <laughs> Three words instead of two, right? <laughs> How many people think he's right? Positive constant velocity. Oh, you got a couple followers there. Salen, yeah? Yeah, he's right. Positive slope line, straight line, means moving to the right, positive direction, same speed. I'm going to write down what he said because I like him better. What did you say? Positive slope. What is the curve? Constant velocity. It does say slope. It does say line, right? If it's curved, can it have a slope? The slope changes, right? Assuming that it's a straight line, right? Straight lines mean constant velocity. Positive slope means movement to the right. Okay, so given that sort of template, Caitlin, you help us out. Slope is zero. I gave you the easy one. I think. What is what does flat slope mean? Everything help her out. What is that is true, but I need a little bit more. Because this one is constant speed too, right? So what's different? For me? In a certain direction. No, oh, you've actually gone away from it now. What do you think, Emily? For me? Not moving, absolutely. No motion, stop. Flat line means? You're dead. You're part of the course, I do. He'll be right there. Wait 30 seconds. Okay, so slope is zero. As Steve says, flat line, dead, no motion. You're stopped. Doesn't matter where you are, you're stopped. Last one. Negative slope. <laughs> now continue to lap. You have. You know, it's like it's like the guy doing the crazy dance. You know, he's your follower now. You're the leader. You started the movement. Motion to the left. Line of negative slope means negative constant velocity. All right. Most of our ideas reviewed. We'll move forward over the next few days. Okay. If you